Hello, here's another tricky video tutorial. It's directing object movement. Now, if you've already watched the camera movement tutorial, then these two are almost exactly the same, with just one or two little flourishes of difference in this one. So, um, let's press ahead. It's been marked as tricky because uh, oh, this starts to mess around with your sort of 3D spatial awareness. We've got a lot of controls to move things forwards and backwards and up and down and left and right and stuff. But it's like the camera movement. Keep it simple and get some practice and you'll be able to do some quite cool things with objects moving around. Over in Movie Zoo, I've got the blank set and I'm going to... Two things I'm going to do first of all. I'm going to create a, a car object and rotate it around so it's pointing away from us. And I'm also going to put a texture on the ground so that we can actually see um, see ourselves moving across the ground. Okay, that's the scene ready. Let me just pull back and up a little bit. Okay, so like everything else in Movie Zoo, directing object movement has a two step process. You firstly have to prepare object movement and then go in and direct object movement. In many cases, you'll have nothing to prepare, but let's take a look at it anyway. Okay, so um, the police car has gone see-through and the pink um, pivot point, rotation point of the police car has appeared. And just like the camera, you can move this pivot point around so that the car can, can rotate at a point other than its centre. We've got pretty much the same controls as we have done for um, directing camera movement. We've got the movement speed, which will control how how fast are the top speed that this car can get to, how quickly it can turn, how quickly it accelerates and decelerates. But this is the extra one, gravity. Now this is a nice little feature when it comes to doing things like a car that you want to stay on the ground. With gravity off as it is now, that car is free to sort of float around as if it was weightless. If we put just a little bit of gravity on, then that means that the car will always try and find the ground plane and make driving it a lot easier. Okay, let's head over to direct. This again is a lot like the camera movement tutorial. Let's see what it looks like with its default settings and none of these changed apart from the little increase in gravity that we did. We hit record and we can drive this car around pretty much using the point of view controls for movie zoo. So I can use my left mouse button and push the mouse forward to drive the car forward. I can push it back, I can use my right mouse button to rotate the car left and right and the two mouse buttons together I can raise the car up on the ground and when I let go the gravity being switched on pulls it back down. If we adjust gravity and lift the car up then it will come down with more of a crash. Let's just keep it small just now. Also we have the first person sort of shooter controls W, A, S and D to go left, right and strafe and forward and back. We have the um, arrow keys to rotate us front and back and to go forwards and backwards. All the other stuff still there. Page up and page down to rotate the object and the square brackets roll over on its side. Now let's stop recording there. Again if you want any help with that you have to go to help and keyboard shortcuts camera animation, movement, here we go. This explains all the sort of controls that you need for moving a car around and it's also pretty much the same as camera animation. All this stuff makes sense for an object too. Alright, so that's the default settings. Um, that's the kind of behaviour you get. Let's rewind and close that. We'll delete the police car and we'll create a new one. Create an object. This time let's do the big saloon car. Let's see what some of these options do. So let, again, let's go to Direct Object Movement. Now watch what happens. Your point of view, your position is immediately grabbed and you're put away behind the car. This is affected by this option right here, Direct or Start Location. As you can see, it's locked to the object's axis. Now that basically means that you're on a stick that starts off the little pink cross and goes all the way to your face so that when the car moves, you follow along on the stick behind it. Car goes forward and you go forward, and vice versa. 
the next one here, in fact, no, let, let's change this. Let's stop and let's change this and see what the option is. Let's put it to adjustable. Now, adjustable means that your start location can now be altered. So as long as you're not recording, you can change your point of view, get into perhaps a nicer place to view the car, and then hit record. So you've positioned your point of view much closer to the car, and now you can drive it without it being so far away. You're still on the uh, the fixed stick, as it were, but now you're you're just a little bit closer. Let's turn on gravity and find the ground again. Okay. The next one to talk about. Let's reset this back to the way it was. Object rotation affects the director's position. So this is the default setting. This means that as you rotate the car. Your position, you being the director, also rotates. So you can see that you're whizzing across the landscape as well. Let's stop that and switch it and see what else we've got. Does not affect director position. So this now means that when you rotate the car, you'll stay put. And the car will rotate in front of you and you no longer go whizzing around the scene. The other controls are pretty much the same as the uh, camera stuff. Let's just stop that, reset it, hit record. <clears throat> I'm going to press the sideways one, I'm going to press the A key to start going sideways. I can change the movement speed as I move by altering these sliders. Similarly, if I use the arrow key left and right to rotate it, I can change the rotation speed just by changing this slider. And the smoothness is a kind of dampening effect. It controls how long it takes you to accelerate or decelerate to top speed. If you turn it off, then you get some pretty stop-start animations and movement. Gravity I've already mentioned. With no gravity on, what it's possible to do is take the car and float it off the ground. And when you let go of all your buttons, uh, we've got a little, little bit of value in here. Let's take that right down to zero. So we can take the car off the ground, we can spin it, we can roll it, and it will never ever fall to ground. In reality, doing cars and things like that, it's always better if you've got a little bit of gravity on. Let's just stop that. Rewind and do some more movement. It's good if you put a little bit of gravity on, because when you're driving, the car has a tendency to stay on the ground. Even if you raise it up, and let it go, it should fall. And there it goes. Now let's take a look at the timeline for this. You can see that the object, if it's selected, if it's not selected, you have to select it. It appears in the timeline editor, and its movement channels are represented by this yellow, these yellow blocks right here. And again, like anything else, you can adjust it and move it around. Let's rewind that and delete or get rid of that box. We're back to the start. Let me show you another example. So if we created something like a table, um, let's search for a better table. This one right here, for example, kitchen table. Let's imagine that we wanted to animate this falling over. Well, in order to do that, what we'd have to do is go to Prepare, Object Movement. Now, we want gravity to be quite strong. We don't want it to be that smooth. Rotation speed and movement speed quite high. And then let's go to Direct. Now, I really want to adjust the position of that rotation point. So for now, director start location, I'm going to make that adjustable so that I can go around and see where that rotation point is sitting. If I select it, now a table would probably pivot from one of its legs. So I'm going to put the pivot point about there. And I'm going to come back and lock it. And then I'm going to hit record. And then use the page up and page down boom, to pop the key pop the table on its back. Stop. Let's get rid of that. 
and sink down. There you can see we've animated the table falling over. Let's rewind and watch what happens. Not exactly the best animation in the world, but you get the idea. So if you want to do object animation, have cars driving around and things flying off at tables and what have you, then it's a good idea to keep it simple, to get plenty of practice and um, and take a look at the keyboard help menus.